Welcome to part two of our interview with Kevin Trasavage about the demonic home haunting involving the Rerick family. I know in this case we're talking about something demonic, but when you're dealing with a case where it's not demonic and it, it was a, mm-hmm. a human spirit or soul and, and someone wants it out of the house uh, because it is it is troubling them, it is bothering them, it is disturbing them. Mm-hmm. What are the parameters on something like that? Can something like that be destroyed, for lack of a better term, or moved <laughs> on to another level? Uh, or is that another thing where it's just it, it's relocated? Well, now, the... I, I've seen people that say they could remove a ghost from a house, a human spirit. Mm-hmm. You can't. Okay, a human spirit will only move on when it wants to. It has some kind of attachment to the house. It either psychologically, there's something about the house. It was very possessive of something in the house. It was very protective of somebody in the house. And it won't, won't move on till it wants to. There are some tricks of the trade to keep it quelled but you can never really get rid of it and what we pride ourselves with in the central pennsylvania paranormal research association we just don't go into a house that yes your house is haunted we try to help people live with the entity and there's ways you can psychologically control the entity it'll still be there and if anybody charges by saying i can get your this ghost out of your house for i've seen five hundred dollars <laughs> that's garbage yeah because they will never move on. They'll stay, but you can control them. You I, you treat them like a bad relative. You know, a relative that moved in your house can't get rid of? You set up guidelines for it. And after a while, people do the stuff. We give them the little tricks of the trade. There's nothing, anything uh, uh, witchcraft or anything. It's just basic things they could do around the house that they could control the environment and actually make it weaker. What, or set of parameters for it. What's more difficult to deal with in terms of end goal being eradicating or tampering down the activity in a home? Is it dealing with a demonic entity that can be pushed out, or is it more difficult to deal with a human spirit that has more will or choice to say, I'm not leaving? Um, actually, the demonic can be the, the worst to do with because we've had deal with, because we've had people that we've, we've cleansed their house it settled down, but then they go back to their old actions before. They go back to, I had one lady, this was years ago, that practiced practice the black arts. And she brought something in, which normally it would. And then she called six months later, it's back in my house. Well, what were you doing? I was doing the same thing. I said, well, you brought it back in again. That was kind of stupid. But the human entity is easier to control, by my opinion, because you can can change the environment and make it less active. So the demonic is the, the worst one, I'd say, out of the two of them. Okay. Let's go back to the, the Rarick family and, and that case specifically. When you went in and, and you had the, the intervention initially, how did that go? What was what was the the result of that that first intervention there at that home? Okay, the first intervention right away. I didn't tell my other psychic that I brought in. She came in cold. I like bringing one in cold and let her see if what she tells me jives with what my wife says. And she walked around, and we did a traditional, normal investigation just to see if we could get anything on film, anything on audio. And we got nothing. The house was quiet. And for the uneducated, the non-experienced, that would mean to them the house is not haunted. To me, I know something's hiding. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and the one we have, she's very blunt. And I know you probably couldn't put this on the pa- podcast. She pulled me to the side and she said, we're going to we're gonna have to pray the shit out of this house. Because mm-hmm. this thing is strong. Because this thing is evil and strong. So after the investigation, I sat down with the Rurik family. I asked their permission for us to do it first. And they said, that's fine. And then we set up for the intervention. So knowing you're going into something that's going to be very difficult, it's going to take a lot of effort. Uh, It's going to take a, a lot to move this thing. 
How do you prepare yourself for something like that? Prepare myself, I usually say prayers at home before I go out. I go over everything to make sure I say every prayer that I know. I have books of prayers to protect myself because I am a target. But I also pray at the house for the family and for the uh, team members. But I also pray for myself and my wife because we are the main targets of the group. And you just basically get yourself spiritually at ease before you go in. Once you then went in, knowing what you were about to encounter, how did that go? Uh, it, as I said, it did fight back, but it did move on. It took two times to do it mm -hmm. because this thing didn't want to let go. It, it was too strong. But after the second time, it did finally leave. And, the fa and ha happily, the family is still satisfied. And they said their house is okay. Once it did finally leave and, and it calmed down, were other elements of the family improved as far as, as you know, mentally oh. and, and all that? Yeah, yes, because before that, there was a lot of tension in the family, a lot of friction, which the entity will cause that. They, they love, they feed on that. Mm -hmm. And after the, they, we left, the family seemed like they're more cohesive. They were just a happy family again. We talked earlier about why sometimes these things are attracted to a certain family or a certain home. Quite often it has to do with the, the current mental state of the family or a place of weakness that it feels they can jump into and, and take advantage of. Are there any other things associated with this case or any other uh, reasons why there may have been something going on at the specific property? Oh, there's... Um there's other reasons too. So these entities are always around. They're always trolling in the air, always around us. And they're just waiting to feed on someone. But there's also times, like I said, they could be brought in by uh, people not knowing or practicing the black arts. Uh, Ouija boards are my favorite ones. We've had a lot of cases with those. Mm -hmm. Because I tell people when you use a Ouija board, that's like leaving your door open in New York City. One, something good could come in or something bad could come in. And usually something bad will come in. And thirdly, it could be a house that somebody practiced the black arts in and it brought something in, but it couldn't feed off those people. So it just basically stayed in that house for decades till someone moves in that it finally found a weakness it could feed on. What did you find out specifically about the history of this property? On the history of this property, they didn't have much of it. I looked into it and I found out that gypsies did move through that area at one time. And as I walked in, we're walking in the house, Christine, my wife, looked into the woods and she said, a sacrifice was done here. And she said, I believe it was also a, a murder. And they brought something in with it. They were doing some kind of ritual that brought this in. So this entity was on the property. And what happened was it stayed dormant until this happened to Jacinda, to the Rerex. There's all this physical and psychological issues. Then it came into action. Then it sprung in on them. It was waiting. And they have the element of time on their side. They could outlive us, or outweigh, out. They, they could go over years before they become active when you have something like that that occurs on on a piece of, of land uh, a ritual of some sort uh and obviously this would have occurred uh, many 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 years ago is there ever anything that can be done to get that stain out of that area of land or once it's done it's done like an ink stain on a shirt <laughs> it's, it's totally contaminated okay and, yep uh, we have a place around here. Um, I live in central Pennsylvania, and there's a place called Katie's Church. This is an example of it. And the story is the this, this church is haunted because the girl hung herself on her wedding day uh, because she was jilted at the altar. Well, I found out through uh, a little bit of uh, history that there, Katie's still alive. 
and that was just a story. But um, there's so many cults go out there that when we walked out there, both of my senses have said it two separate times, the, the ground is contaminated. Because people do kind of rituals out there because they think the place is haunted. So once the place is, the, the ground is contaminated, it's done. There's nothing you can do about it. It's 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 just there. It's like nuclear. <laughs> it's 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 yeah 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 it's, yeah it's just fallout. Yes, and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and that area I told you about that church. Mm-hmm. It's uh, we were talking about if somebody bought the property. Oh yeah, you could put some kind of recreational thing on there, but I would never build a house on it because it's just it's it's contaminated. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do about it. So when you said earlier. Um, you were talking about one of the first things you said most houses are haunted it's just most people don't realize it uh, well, can you expand right. on that a little bit uh, as far as how how that is I mean, does it matter if it's a new house if it's an old house if it's you know mm-hmm. expand on that a little bit okay most houses are haunted I would say about eight, I'd say 70 percent are haunted it's just like I said it depends on the entity it depends if it's a show itself. It depends on any changes. Uh, and people with new houses aren't safe from hauntings, I would say. I might use the proper word, safe for it. Because um, sometimes there's something on the property already that the entity was there from a prior building that was torn down. Or sometimes I call them migratory spirits. We've had a few of those where they built the house and there's no history of anyone dying in this house, no suicides, no anything. But there have been accidents on the highway outside. And sometimes they migrate into the house because they feel some kind of connection with the people. There's something psychological about the people that they like. They, they feel something for a person and they'll move into the house. We have a movie theater, uh, one of the multiplexes about 10 miles from here. And they have a haunting there, we investigated that. And this girl they see coming out of theater three and goes into the girl's bathroom. She's wearing 1960s clothes. And that place was built in 1980s. There's nothing on, on that property prior except the swampland. But there were multiple accidents out there. So what we think is the migrant, it just migrated in because of the activity and the people. Mm-hmm. So the age of the house means nothing. It's I- just that. You just happen to build something there. You yeah, know? That, that so. happens to be a, a, a very common, I think, misconception of, of people where it's the, the reaction is, I don't know why this would be haunted. It's a brand new home. But that, that explains yeah, it, it quite well. Yeah. Yeah. And also, there's a prime time for hauntings, and it's October through March. And it's not because of Halloween, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, human entities, human spirits need energy to manifest or to do things. Um, hence they're more active like in computer rooms now around kitchens with the microwaves that's why when we're uh, at houses our batteries drain fast but the reason October through March is because it's the dry season yes we get snow but there's more static electricity in the air so they're more active at this time period Okay, it's easier to feed off of something with, with that oh yeah because there. you notice when you, dry, you put your foot in the car you get static electricity sure. that's your dry air so it's feeding off static electricity in the air. One of the things that I hear quite often with investigators is they don't like to use the word demonic. Uh, or if they do, they use it very, very sparingly. Would yeah. you say that maybe there are more demonic infestations or things like that going on out there than tend to, to get credit for? I believe there is because there's more unrest in the world right now. There's a lot more people dabbling in in, acti- in, in stuff because of their lifestyle or what they want. Uh, I've seen an increase. It's it's increased at least threefold since I've been doing this. I've been doing this about 25 years, oh. and um, it's really a shame. It keeps me busy, but it's not not a good thing. And I don't use the word demonic when we talk to a client. I usually say a darker entity. Mm -hmm. Because the demonic scares them right away. We try to keep the fear level down as much as we can. Uh, Are there ever cases... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, No, you're fine. I was going to say, are there ever cases where there is something demonic infesting a home 
simultaneously with uh, something that's not demonic, something that was a spirit oh, yeah. or a soul, and, and, and do they yeah. interact on the other side, or, or are they completely separate as far as, as their interaction? Uh, what I've had cases of both being there, and that happened at the Rerick House. And what happens is the human entity is fearful of the demonic. They know this thing is bad. Mm-hmm. They know it, 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 it shuns away from it. It's scared of it. And the most times, I'd say 80% of the times, the human entity isn't there to hurt the people. It's sometimes helpful to people. It likes the people. Mm-hmm. And you have to, there's a fine line of doing things to drive out the demonic, but you don't also don't want to quell the human entity that's in the house. Mm-hmm. But there are, there are cases that they're both together that we've noticed that after the rear ex, the darker entity was gone, the place felt lighter. But my psychics walked through, and they said the other entities are here, and they're happier because they were fearful of it. They knew right away. Can the demonic entity cause harm to the non-demonic entity, to the human spirit? Is there a way? I guess no, they won't harm them. No, no, they can't really harm them. But the human entity is fearful of them. Okay. It, 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 it's showing me it's it's the it's the king of the castle, basically. What it's trying to say. Okay. I was talking about this the other day on on our other podcast, Real Ghost Stories Online, about um, it, when when things are being cast out of a home, when it is something demonic, and in this exact scenario where there's something dark and there's something not dark, but say the family is fine with a non-dark entity, how do you go about selectively casting out one and not the other? I mean, is there a clear way of doing that? Well, uh, demonic will react to the, the, the prayers. Mm-hmm. The human entity will not react to a prayer because it knows God's with us. Okay, it's not fearful of God because he, mm-hmm. it's it's it as the demonic is. The, God is demonic. I mean, God is the entity of demonic. Mm-hmm. But to the human entity, they know anything spiritual is their friend, and it won't react. So um, there's sometimes people have used prayers of the dead to help settle the human entities down, and we don't use them during the demonic because we want to keep them there because the people are happy with them. In, in the Rurik house, both of my sensitives felt that it was the Rurik's, the wife's parents were there, their spirits, and we don't want to drive them or make it uncomfortable for them. So if they're happy with them being there, just let them there. So we had to make a fine line of what we wanted to do. Before I give this advice to everyone who might think they need some kind of intervention or an investigation, look into the uh, the resume, the experience of the people you're dealing, you're getting in. There are a lot of newer people out there that have lesser experience, and they could cause more problems. Look around, shop around first of all, and if they do charge you to do it, don't do it. We do it for free. Reputable groups do it for free. That wraps up our interview. Thank you for being a gravekeeper and supporting this program, allowing us to continue to do this and keep it on the air. We cannot do it without your support. Until next time for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.